We're almost like her Bible study. We gotta go. We're coming, we're coming. Hang on. <laughs> All right, we just made Bible study. Thank goodness. Don't worry, we got time to do the Bible verse. Just let us catch our breaths. Why don't y'all go ahead and stand up? <laughs> okay, repeat after me. Repeat after me. <laughs> In him. In him. We have redemption. We have redemption. Through his blood. Through his blood. The forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins. In accordance with the riches. In accordance with the riches. Of God's grace. Of God's grace. Which he lavished upon us. Which he lavished upon us. With all wisdom. With all wisdom. And understanding. And understanding. Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1. 7 through 8. 7 through 8. Now let's go. Learn to talk to Jesus. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Bible Study, um, and today we're going to be talking about God's grace and mercy towards our sins, and we're going to be reading Paul's transformation story in this really cool book called the Storybook Bible, and it's just basically this really simple version of the Bible so we can easily more understand it. So I'm going to throw it over to Chief Robert, and he's going to read the story for us. All right. Of all the people who kept the rules, Saul was the best. I'm good at being good, he'd tell you. He was very proud and very good, but he wasn't very nice. Saul hated anyone who loved Jesus. He traveled around looking for them. He wanted to catch them and put them in prison. He wanted everyone to forget all about Jesus. He didn't believe Jesus was the rescuer, and he didn't believe Jesus was alive either. You see, Saul had never met Jesus. So one day, Jesus met Saul. Saul was on his way to Damascus when suddenly a dazzling light flashed like lightning. It was brighter than the sun. It was too bright. Saul shielded his eyes and fell to the ground. He heard a loud voice. It was too loud. It gave Saul a headache. Saul, Saul, said the loud voice. Why are you fighting me? Lord, Saul answered, who are you? I am Jesus, said the voice. When you hurt my friends, you are hurting me too. Saul's whole body trembled. Go to the city, Jesus said. I'll tell you what to do. When Saul opened his eyes, he couldn't see. His helpers had to hold his hand and lead him like a little child. Saul was blind for three whole days, and yet it was as if he was seeing for the very first time. Meanwhile, there was a man called Ananias who loved Jesus. Jesus came to him in a dream. Go to Saul and pray for him, and I will make him see again. Ananias knew all about Saul and how he hated Jesus' followers. Lord, he has come to hurt us. But Jesus told Ananias, Saul is the one I have chosen to tell the whole world who I am. So Ananias went to Saul. Brother Saul, Ananias said, it was Jesus he met on the road, and Ananias prayed for Saul. Suddenly Saul could see again, but he saw everything differently. He wasn't mean anymore. He even changed his name from Saul to Paul, which means small and humble, the very opposite of proud. And do you know what Ananias' name means? The Lord is full of grace. Grace is just another word for gift, which is funny, because that's just what Paul's message was about from then on. Okay, so we see Saul in this story on his way to Damascus, and um, he's headed there to seek out Christians to turn them away from their faith. And if they don't turn away from their faith, then he's going to arrest them and even sentence them to uh, death. And that is where Paul's sin was. He was persecuting others. And so in Romans 3.23, it says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So maybe our sin isn't persecuting others, but maybe we lie or disobey our parents or cheat, which is my biggest um, sin struggle. I love to win at board games, so I cheat a lot. And um, that's something that I'm going to have to be held account accountable for in heaven. But the beautiful thing about our God is that he meets us where we are. And that's what we can see in Saul's story is that Jesus meets Saul on the way to Damascus. And Saul, by every means, was not perfect. And God still sought him out. God intentionally chose Saul to have a relationship with him. And there's something so amazing with that, that God wants to have a relationship with all of us. And um, Paul, Saul, who's about to be transformed to Paul, is um, about to have, um, is changed only by God, which is something that, like, nobody else can do. Only God can change us. And so now that Paul has been changed, he is touching lives of everybody else. He's preaching the word of God. And um, he just had a great impact on the Christian walk um, in our lives. But now 
uh, Chief Robert is going to talk about some more relationships with our God and grace and mercy. Thanks, Chief Claire. Uh, sometimes it's easy to be part of the world that we live in and then to believe the lies that are in this world, which leads to sin. You know, that's what Saul was doing in the beginning. He thought he was doing right, but it was his pride that hurt him a lot. He kept saying he was very proud and he kept thinking he was doing right. And sometimes that's where it can really lead us to sin uh, and we don't know better. But instead, I would encourage us to place our identity in Christ. When we have that identity in Christ as children of God, then we can receive that forgiveness uh, through Jesus. And there's, you know, Paul was, or Saul was this big, big, big sinner. And yet, as Chief Claire was saying, Jesus sought him out and chose him and used him to bring so many others to Jesus and to God and to have a relationship with him. And this is really beautiful. And he can definitely do the same thing for us too. And he, and he continuously and constantly does that with us. And this is such a wonderful thing. So I'm going to read uh, Ephesians 2, 1 through 5 to kind of just explain all of this in a couple of verses. It says, And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course, the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work, and the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And it's such a beautiful ver verse, that last part. It's by grace that we have been saved. And it's not our will. It's nothing that we have done. It's his grace. It's his free gift that he has given us. Uh, and it's just really beautiful to see that and to know that God wants a relationship so much with us that he will continuously forgive our sins. Uh, if we come to him and we repent, it's just amazing. So I'm going to pray this out, and then we'll see you in the next one. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we can come to you in your word and just learn about uh, your forgiveness towards us through Jesus. And we learned about Saul to Paul and how he was this big sinner, but you sought him out, you chose him, and you used him to bring others to you, Lord. And it's such a beautiful story and a beautiful lesson for us to learn that too, Lord, that you are... We are never far away from you, Lord, and you can always reach us, and you are always able to help us and to forgive us, Lord. Help us to draw closer to you as we continue to study your word and we continue to learn about being chosen by you. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. See you later.